Hello. In this video we will be going over fixed effects panel regression in SPSS using least squares dummy variable approach. The fixed effects model can be used to study the relationship between time varying predictors and outcomes. In general, time invariant predictors are not utilized in these models with the exception of certain cases where one might be interested in testing for possible interactions between time invariant and time varying predictors. For this demonstration, we are going to focus on the standard approach examining relationships involving time varying characteristics. With fixed effects models, individual cases serve as their own controls since they are measured over time. Moreover, there is no concern over omitted variable bias due to differences between cases, as all time invariant differences are controlled for. The only possibility for omitted variable bias is when there is a failure to consider other time varying predictors of an outcome. So what we're going to do is go through a series of steps in this demonstration uh, where we carry out a uh, fixed effects panel regression. Now the first thing that you need to do is to make sure that your dependent variable is measured over time and that the repeated measurements have the same meaning and metric. Next, once you've done that, make sure that your data is in long as opposed to wide format. If it is in wide format, you'll need to convert it to long format first prior to running your data analysis. So let's take a look at uh, data in wide format. So this is it right here, and what we have is state data, and basically we have our variables measured over time. So I have four states that are represented, and I have measures from 2005 to 2014 of several variables. I have educational level, basically percentage of high school graduates uh, within the state in 2005, 6, 7, 8, and so forth. Then I also have percentage of the population with a bachelor's for those years. So these are uh, these variables here. Then uh, the percentage with postgraduate post, uh, degrees. And then our dependent variable is going to be robbery rate measured over those years as well. So our dependent variable within our model uh, or outcome variable is going to be robbery rate. So again, basically each variable uh, that you see in wide format is containing data for a state for a given year. So it's 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, all the way through the data set for robbery rate uh, at the very end. So what we're going to do is we're going to first convert this or um, uh, restructure the data into long format. So to do this, we're going to go to data, uh, restructure, and where it says what do you want to do, we're going to click on or leave it clicked on restructure selected data or selected variables into cases. We'll click on next. Now it says how many variables do you want to restructure? So if there's only one, we would just leave the top uh, clicked, but we actually have uh, four var variables that we're working with. So I'm going to click on this button right here at the bottom and then I'm going to type in four in this uh, space right here. So type in four, then hit next and now we're ready to go. So it says fixed variables at the very bottom. So I'm going to actually move these variables. I actually have the state name and the state code or just a, a code variable for the state and I'm going to move those down to fixed variables. So those are going to be um, remain the same. Um, next what we're going to do is you'll see where it says target variable there's a little drop down. So we're going to create a new name for each uh, variable and so the first one is going to be I'll just call this um, percentage or percent uh, high school grad and at this point I will move these variables uh, all the way from 2004 to 2004 or 2005 to 14 over here then I'll click on this go to the trans 2 right here and I'll do um, percent uh, bachelors and do the same thing so basically what we'll do is we'll just do this for all four of our variables so there's bachelors right there next we'll do um, the uh, graduate so percent graduate degree and uh, so we'll move these guys down here as well and then finally we'll do our robbery rate so we'll just do robbery rate and move those over as those over as well so once we've done this, then we'll click on next and it asks how many indexed variables do you want to create. We're just going to stick with one, so we'll click on next and you can basically click on next and then finish. 
and hit OK. And so now you see that the data has been restructured. So each state right here, these are the states. There's Alabama. Our IDs are one right here. It actually creates a new ID variable right here. Uh, that's actually matching our state code right here. So you can see the index variable, which is basically capturing our time. So we have basically this is 2005, 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Then we have percentage for, of high school uh, grads over those, uh, those years as well. Then percentage bachelors, percentage of um, graduate um, degrees and then our robbery rates. So we have that for Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, and Arkansas. So at this point what we'll do is we will create dummy variables to code for group membership or, or um, case membership. So we have uh, we have four uh, states that are being represented so that means that we will be creating three dummy variables and the reference category that I'm going to be using is Alabama right here. So what we'll do uh, in, uh, in terms of recoding, we'll go to transform, recode into different variables, and then I'm going to, um, instead of typing in the state names, I'm just going to use the state code variable right here. So I'm going to move state code over here, and we will start off by calling, we'll start off with Alaska. So I'm just going to create a new variable that's called Alaska change and then we'll type in, uh, so that uh, category has a value of 2, so I'm going to type in 2 right here, and that's the old value, and it's going to be converted to a 1. So we're going to click Add on this, and then all other values will be coded 0. So we'll click Add right here, and then Continue, and um, you know make sure that you've clicked Change right here, and so we'll click on OK. And so now when we look at our data uh, base, we have a new variable that's called Alaska. So you can see that basically uh, those uh, years involving Alaska, we have the Alaska variable uh, is coded 1, and then all of the other states are coded 0 for those different years. So the next we'll do the Arizona. So we'll just click on uh, recode into different variables, and I'm just going to change this right here to Arizona. Click on change and we will just uh, use uh, the old value will be 3 and click on change else will be 0 click on continue and then on OK and so now we see that within our database we have a new variable that's called Arizona and you, ha you have essentially Arizona being reflected with ones right here and then the other, ver the other um, states have codes of 0 for across those years so then finally we will do the last one which will be Arkansas so Arkansas, and uh, its code was 4, and I'm just going to click on change right here, and then continue, and then on OK. So essentially what we've done is we've just created three uh, dummy coded variables uh, for this called Alaska, Arizona, and Arkansas. And so when we include these in our regression analysis, Alabama is our reference category. So essentially the regression coefficient for Alaska will be uh, the difference between Alaska and Alabama. The uh, coefficient for Arizona will be the uh, difference between Arizona and Alabama, and then Arkansas uh, variable, uh, the coefficient will be the difference between Arkansas and Alabama. Those are really not of central focus though in our fixed effects model because mainly what we're interested in is using these variables right here that vary across years as predictors of variation in robbery rate across years. So now what we'll do is we'll go to analyze then regression and then linear and we'll put in our dependent variable which is robbery rate right here we'll put in our um, we'll go ahead and put in our dummy variables uh, first and then we'll uh, add in our main three predictors right here so then when we click on OK we now have our fixed effects regression model so you can see right here the R square for the entire model is 0.819 there's our F test and significance level right here and when we scroll down you can see that we have um, you know we have our three dummy variables and these are uh, essentially the differences between each of these three states and Alabama conditioned on these predictors right here and these are really not of particular relevance the main things that we're interested in are uh, educational level right here and so you can see that in terms of the percentage of high school graduates over uh, the years you can see that 
uh, there's a negative predictive relationship with robbery rates and you can see it's statistically significant uh, for uh, bachelors over the years you can see that there's a negative relationship as well and it's statistically significant at the 0.05 level and then you can see that uh, for um, the percentage of postgraduates over the years you can see there's a negative relationship but it's not statistically significant so you can see that it's fairly easy to run a fixed effects regression model, uh, particularly when you have a, a low number of, of cases. So we had only four states in this in this uh, particular demonstration. But let's say we had you know 20 or 30. Um, you know we could still do use the dummy variable approach, uh, but it would be a lot more difficult and uh, probably trying on your patients. So another option. Um, is to utilize the general linear model uh, option through SPSS. So you can do this by going to Analyze, General Linear Model, and Univariate. And in this case right here, what we'll do is we'll put robbery rate in as a dependent variable. Uh, I'm just going to use the state code. I'm going to put it in as a fixed factor. And then we're going to put in our three time varying predictors in the covariates box down here. If you go under options and you click on estimates of effect size and parameter estimates, the estimates of effect size is going to give us an eta squared value, which is going to basically translate into the R squared value that you see in your regression output uh, that we just ran. And then the parameter estimates um, option right here is going to give us regression parameters. So now if I click on continue and then on OK, you'll see uh, that we get pretty much the same findings. So you'll notice right here partial eta squared is 0.819 and you'll see even underneath the table right here 0.819 there's our F value and significance level. So notice that those values are exactly the same as what we had up above. So there's our R squared value, the same F value and P value for uh, the overall uh, or omnibus test. When you look at the regression parameters you'll notice that we have the same values for each of our three predictor variables. There's the standard errors and the same um, T values and, and uh, P values. So all of these are exactly the same as what we had above. Now you'll notice that down here for the state codes um, it actually utilized uh, dummy uh, coding system as well. It's just that it utilized uh, Arkansas as the reference category as opposed to Alabama. So these values that you are seeing down here are going to look different than what we had above, but that's only because it's using a different uh, dummy coding system. So if we had actually run our previous regression analysis using Arkansas as the uh, reference category instead of Alabama, then we would have gotten the same coefficients uh, that we have down here. But again, the main emphasis uh, in, our, uh, in our analysis are the three time varying predictors in relation to uh, the outcome that varies over time, which is our robbery, robbery rate variable. Okay, so now just for fun, let's uh, compare these results against results using Stata. So uh, this is the Stata program right here, and I've got the data already in long format and imported into Stata. So let's just run our fixed effects model using uh, the panel regression option in Stata. So I'm just going to go down to panel data right here, linear regression. Uh, we're going to use fixed effects model right here. Our dependent variable is robbery rate. Our independent variables are uh, the percentage for high school graduation, percentage bachelor's, percentage graduate level. Under panel settings, we're going to set our ID variable to uh, the state code variable, and um, our time variable is just basically um, we can either use the index or I, I actually created a time variable, but we'll just go ahead and use index right here. We'll click on OK and uh, then on OK right here and you can see that when we ran our analysis, now notice that the output doesn't include all those state dummy variables but um, you'll notice that our regression coefficients, standard errors and our T values and P values, all of these are exactly the same as what we had before when we ran our analysis using SPSS. Um, just so you know, another option, if we were going to use, uh, we could also use the linear regression option in, um, in state as well. We'll just put robbery rate in right here. I'm going to create a, um, a factor variable uh, for state code right here, and then we'll add in our predictors of graduation, uh, bachelor's, and graduate level right here. 
and if we run the analysis you can see that we basically end up again with the same output so you can see there's our r square value right here uh, the f tests and so forth and then all of these uh, coefficients are exactly the same as what we had before when we ran our least squares regression using SPSS so that pretty much concludes this demonstration of fixed effects panel regression uh, pretty much focusing on SPSS. And I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.